enjoyed the uh, Christmas parade tonight. I know uh, it was a little long for, for some of us who maybe weren't dressed as appropriately as we should have been. Um, but I was wondering if I could get your attention for just a little bit. we got a couple gifts over here we'd like to give away. And we're going to do this just by getting you to answer some trivia questions, some Christmas trivia questions. So if you think you're pretty good at uh, Christmas trivia, um, I'm going to need somebody to come on over here. I'll get you to stand by the fire hydrant and um, get you to answer a couple questions about Christmas trivia. So I need somebody who thinks they know at least three correct answers in a Christmas trivia, and I'll let you pick from one of the prizes that are down here on the ground next to me. I know it's a little bit chilly, but I won't take too much of your time. So if anybody would like to come up, I need somebody, some, some guy brave enough to come up here and do it that's not ducking behind the buildings over there <laughs> or behind the bushes over there, maybe. Is anybody uh, brave enough? I'm going to need an adult, not a kid. Go back over here. I'm going to need an adult to come over here and answer a couple of trivia questions about Christmas. Is anybody up to it? Anybody. You can't raise your hand, Steve. You can't raise your hand. Uh, Christmas trivia. You think you know enough about Christmas trivia? Do you have a few moments? I don't want to keep you if, uh, if they're cold. Okay, no problem, no problem. You guys have a good night. Be careful walking, okay? Okay, again, I'm looking for somebody who can answer three simple Christmas trivia questions. If you get those three questions correctly, then I'll let you pick from one of these prizes over there. I need anybody, anybody who can do it. I'm preferably looking for somebody in a black hoodie. Somebody in a black hoodie. I specifically need someone in a black hoodie to come and answer these trivia questions for me and carrying a blanket. Maybe a blanket containing the colors of red and green. And you might have to bring the blanket over here because I can't see the color of it. Okay, come on over. Come on over. Be careful. Be careful walking across the street. Be careful walking across the street. What's your name? John. John. Hey, my name's Adam. John. It's good to meet you. Oh, man. No, hold my hand again. Your hand's warm. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Your hands are a little cold. All right, John, I'm going to get you to answer a couple of trivia questions. And if you get these right, I'm going to let you, let you pick from one of these boxes down here, okay? Who are your friends? Family. Girlfriend or family? How you guys doing? You guys doing good? Cold? Kind of got a frozen look on your face. Maybe your face is frozen. Your mind's a little bit cold. Okay, John, let me get right to the point. Let me get you to answer a couple of these trivia questions, see if you get them correctly. You ready? Okay, this one's easy. This is a true or false, so it's 50-50. True or false, the Friday after Thanksgiving is the biggest and busiest shopping day of the year. False. You said it's true. Actually, the day after Thanksgiving is the fifth busiest shopping day of the year. So we got that one wrong. It's all right. We got some more questions. How about this? How many reindeer does Santa have? And this is a multiple choice, okay? 12, 9, 8, or nobody knows. We can get help from the audience. He can call in a friend. Okay, I'll give you a hint. It's not 8 or 12. Okay, you say you say nine. You can stick with that answer. Actually, nobody knows. Those are only eight of Santa's favorite, or excuse me, nine of Santa's favorite reindeer. He has a whole herd of reindeer. Okay, here's another multiple choice. I'm going to try to make this easy for you. Don't sing the song, but what comes after eight maids a milking? Is it nine geese? Nine pipers, nine ladies, or nine drummers? Geese, pipers, ladies, or drummers? What comes after eight maids of milking? No, it's not geese. Okay, I'll, I'll eliminate two. We'll do a 50 50 for you. How about that? It's not geese. And it's not pipers. Is it ladies or drummers that come after maids of milking? I am. I know. Uh, no! 
It's ladies. It's ladies. That's okay. Well, those are three questions. You got them wrong, but I tell you what. You seem like a really nice guy. You got some help over here. I, I, I think somebody said ladies. Did you say ladies? She said ladies. Oh, you should have listened to that. Stick around, guys. Stick around. Okay, I'll tell you what we're going to do. Let's try a different trivia quiz. Okay, I'm going to ask you a simple question, and we're going to see if you answer it correctly. I'm going to have to answer some, ask some other questions to make sure that the way you answered it is true. Okay? So this is going to be a little bit more direct. This doesn't have to do with... People dancing, milking, things like that. Yeah, yeah. That sounds kind of odd, doesn't it? People <laughs> dancing and milking. Um, all right, John. Would you consider yourself to be a good person? It's breathing. It's breathing. I have to say so. Have to say so. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you another set of questions to see if that's true or not. Okay. All right. It's basically you trying to prove that you're a good person. Okay. John, have you ever told a lie? Yes. Okay, good, because if you said no, that might actually be lying. What do you call somebody who tells lies, John? Well, uh, <laughs> I'll give you a hand. It rhymes with pants on fire. <laughs> you want me to give you multiple choice? What do you call someone who tells lies? What's that? A liar, of course. A liar, right. If I told a lie to you, then you'd say, hey, you're a liar. Johnny, John called you Johnny, didn't I? You call him Johnny? Johnny, that just sounds badder. That sounds like Johnny. It's like a rebel. Okay. Have you ever stolen anything? It doesn't matter how big it was, whether it was a toy from your brother or sister, whether it was a penny or a million dollars. Have you ever stolen anything? Have to go with yes. What do you call someone who steals things? Well, you would call them a stealer if they played football for Pittsburgh. Yes. But if somebody's running out of a bank and they stole something, you'd say, hey, stop you. Um, uh, <laughs> begins with a T-H, ends with an E. Uh, <laughs> B. B. Okay, one more question. One more question, okay? Johnny, have you ever... Did it again, Johnny. Johnny! Have you ever used God's name in a low manner, said like, oh my... Or said Jesus Christ, but not when you're praying to him or talking about him. Maybe out of anger you stubbed your toe or something. You ever done anything like that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, God says not to take his name in vain. He says he will not hold him guiltless who does so. So now we started out asking you a basic question. Would you consider yourself to be a good person? You said yes. Now let's imagine I have to introduce you to my friends. And I say, hey guys, this is bad boy Johnny. And Johnny is a friend of mine. I want to introduce him to you. Johnny's a lying, thieving blasphemer. Now do you think they'd go, hey man, that's a great guy. No, if you had to do the same thing to me, to your friends, they'd be like, I don't want to hang out with that dude. I don't care how cool his hat is. I don't want to hang out with him. So Johnny, even though you said you're a good person, when we take you by God's standards, and what I did was I gave you three of God's Ten Commandments, you really see that you're not, right? You're like the rest of us. Even though we try to be good, we're really not. See, it's not like with Santa Claus doing a naughty or nice list. God has an absolute and perfect standard. Johnny, let, let me ask you this. This is a little bit more personal. If you were to die tonight and you stood before God, do you think God would find you innocent or guilty of violating His laws? Think about think about what you've answered to. Lying, thieving, and using His name in vain. Do you think He'd see you as guilty? Okay, so let's say you're guilty. Now, if you're guilty in a court of law, what happens? Does the judge say, hey man, I'm going to let you go. Even though you've broken a law, I'm just going to let you go. No, he has a fine that you have to pay, right? So, if you're standing before God and God says you're guilty of violating his law, he says the only payment that's due for that is eternity in hell. Now, though that's not something most people think about, especially around this time of year. But Johnny, do you understand that? If you die today and God judged you, he finds you guilty and you go to hell for all eternity? Does that concern you? Let's put aside the trivia questions and the gifts. Does that concern you at all? I mean, yeah, in that case it would. 
But do you know what God did so that you don't have to go to hell? 2,000 years ago, God became a man, Jesus Christ. He was fully God and fully man. He came to this earth and He lived a perfect and sinless life. And 30 to 33 years into that life, He voluntarily went to the cross. See, we think a lot about just Christmas and Jesus' birth, but we tend to forget what He did on the cross. What happened that day, John, was that Jesus Christ paid your sins. He voluntarily went up there and He paid the debt that you owe. He died on that cross. Three days later, He was rose from the grave. He was seen by over 500 eyewitnesses and ascended into heaven 40 days afterwards and is seated at the right hand of the Father, waiting to return in final judgment. Now, John, either God will return, either Jesus Christ will return to this earth and judge you here, or like in the book of Hebrews tells us, it is appointed for man to die once and then comes judgment. Either he'll judge you here when he returns, or he'll call you up into heaven through death and judge you before his throne. But knowing that is not enough. What the Bible says is we have to repent. We need to turn away from our sins, ask God for forgiveness, and put our trust in what Jesus Christ did on the cross. So do you understand? If we stand before God in judgment and we're guilty, there's nothing we can do to pay Him back. He's going to send us to hell because that's the only payment we're due. But if you repent and trust in Jesus Christ, you'll receive the greatest gift you could ever possibly have. It doesn't come under a tree, it doesn't come wrapped up, and it's not something a family member can give you. It's only something that God can give you through His Son. So I want you to think about those things, okay? And I tell you what, for being such a good sport, I want you to grab one of these one of these gifts. Actually, you know what? For helping Him out, I want you to grab one of these gifts for you, and then grab one for... I'll let you pick which one you want to give it to. Oh, she... Oh, he's going to give it to his kid. She's like, give it to his girlfriend. So why don't you come over here and grab two of these. I appreciate it. Absolutely. John, thanks for talking to me, man. Please think what we're talking about, okay?